Nikila la vila ta se kuma Se kuma kaili mwana wa munna Se kuma liye na lile Kia kamala kago sala kietu Kwa se rowe ka kwa palashwe Rabu ijane le mwasamo ba iti Ka babo kile di khosi za ba putin Babo kile ban na bo khama le khamani Babo kile ban na bo tsikedi Ma le tamut Babo ka rase bolai Mchwa ya kholad Bao ke ba kha mangwa Ba kha mabilet Ka na ba kile ba bile za se khomantwa Uri le ka a se bohi mwa na kha khama Iri le bo o a sae ba bilet Dimelang, dimelang, lotse fela go gae, lina la me ke pabala le sipei. Ka la mogela tshe go ntene mo video nyame, ga ke tsori channel ke eng ga swana so ke tla re fo video nyame. Le mogetswe, ga go ntene it's such a beautiful day. Um welcome for those of you who didn't hear what I was saying. I was just saying, welcome. Today we are reviewing Kalaba by Susan Williams. I gave this book a five out of five stars because it's got a lot of information um, it's got pictures and it's talking about one of the people I was so fascinated about once when I don't know what I was doing but I was just checking some of the life and I was just I just had a big fascination about him I don't know why, but then I got this book and I've got to read about him and his family and I was like, yep, this is the guy I like and more, more because he looks like my father, like they have this shape, <laughs> um, this hairline and their, like their structure on the lips looks the same, I don't recall my father being tall, I don't think he was tall, he was just an average South African height, but when I look at Sarah Kama, I think about my father. This book is about a love story about Sarah Kama and Bruce Williams. Sarah Kama was um, Busana's first president. He was supposed to be chief he was a rightful chief, but he was never installed as chief of his people. He was a very educated man. He was a very loving man. He was a very devoted man. He was a very forgiving man. And there was no way you couldn't fall in love with Sir Kama. Um, and so we get to understand his character, his challenges, and how those challenges never changed him as a person and changed his relationship with his wife. Instead, those challenges made their love so strong that nothing, nothing, literally nothing could break them apart. It is just a beautiful love story. So that's why I gave this a 5 out of 5 because I really really love this book <laughs> okay I've got a confession to make I didn't I didn't read this book in a week or in a month I read it in a period of months and I can't remember when I started to read it but it was last year I got this book and um, I didn't know it was 
a story about Salata Khama and Ruth Khama. And then when I started reading the pages, I was like, Lord, thank you for giving me this book, you know, because I didn't I just bought it, it was cheap and then I bought it. And then it had the story and pictures that I so wanted to see for so long, you know, and I was like, oh, I'm so happy about this. I read the story, not, um, it wasn't a slow read because it was boring or I, it was difficult to get through it or, you know, nothing negative about it. It just took long because it needed a lot more attention because of the details it contains. It needed research for me to understand the background of the story and I just I just couldn't finish it because I love the story you know and um wow this is such a beautiful story hey so Ruth and Sereze met in London Sereze okay let me give you a background about Sereze Sereza Khama comes from a royal family in Botswana, from Bangwato or Bamangwato tribe, one of the big tribes in Botswana. I know of eight principal tribes in Botswana. Um, well, let me read them for you. Uh, it's Bakata, Bakwena, Bangwakezi, Balite, Bangwato. Paralung, Batawana, and Batropa. Sereza comes from Bangwato. When he was four, five, six, somewhere there, his father died um, just two years after he was, he became a chief. So when his father died, Sereza was automatically the next chief. But he was a baby. And so they installed um, Tsukedi Khama, his uncle, to be the region chief at the time, you know, to, to sit at the throne or until such a time when Sereze would be able to take the chief, chieftaincy. I hope um, that's the correct term. But anyways, um, so Tsukedi Khama was like a father to Sereza Khama and Sereza was like a, a son to Tsukedi Khama. Tsukedi always pushed for education. He always mentored Sereza. He loved him. He gave him a generous allowance at school. Um, Tsukedi told Sereza, go to school so that you could liberate your people. And so Sereza studied law, he studied economics and politics. He went to Fort Hare, he finished a Bachelor of Science there um, and he went to Z to, to pursue law um, and so when he got there he didn't like the treatment from, from white people. He was friends with Nelson Mandela um, but he didn't stay for a year in Edwards University and then he moved to Britain. Um, Oxford University where like there was a small amount of black people and so he felt he felt like he didn't belong there because you know those white people were they didn't give him attention and as someone who has always been popular with his peers he felt like he didn't belong there so he moved to London to a college um, I forgot the name of the college, but um, he still studied law and he also did a course in, I don't know what this course is called, but he wanted to be a barrister and that was his passion, that was his love and he pursued that, he loved it while doing law um, because he needed to liberate his people. Um, while he was there, he had friends, he met his friend Charles Njonjo. Charles Njonjo, they went to Fort Hare together and they met again in London. And so there he felt like he belonged because there were a lot of um, 
white people who were pro-black people and a lot of black people so it was just a nice vibe and um so Sir when he went to london i think he was 24 and that's when he met ruth and when he met ruth he saw ruth and he had concluded that that one would be my wife and so he went to his friend Charles Njonjo and said, Charles, I found my wife. And so Charles was like, wow, okay. And there was an event where fortunately Sarah and Ruth met. They met through Ruth's sister, Morel. Morel who wanted them to meet because she felt they had a lot of things in common. One was jazz, and the second one being their good sense of humor. So they, she felt that they were compatible to each other. But Ruth at the time didn't feel like um, this could be someone I could date because he seemed to, to, he looked like other black guys she had met at the time. But as they continued to meet um, and talk, she realized that you know actually i i really find this person very attractive and i would regard this one as someone to date and so three months into knowing each other Sereze finally asked ruth out to a concert they went to this jazz concert and they enjoyed themselves and a few months later, after knowing each other more about their background, um, what they liked, what they didn't like, you know, that, that sort of thing when you're dating. And Sarepe one day said to Ruth, Ruth, that was his proposal, by the way, Ruth, will you be able to love me? And Ruth just smiled and she didn't have to say anything. It was a yes and they decided they were going to marry as soon as possible they met in june by the following year in september they got married but before they could get married there were challenges along the way the white people didn't want them to be together there was a problem because the resident was supposed to be chief go back home and be installed but the problem is his people were supposed to select a wife for him from another royal family. But Teresa was adamant that he loved Ruth and Ruth was his wife. Um, so he went back home to convince the tribe and his uncle was very angry at Teresa at the time to please consider this relationship and this love, to consider seeing Ruth the way he saw her and, um, and that's how this love story began there was there were a lot of challenges one that really 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 irritated me was south african government apartheid government you know apartheid government give those people those neighbors who want to control what's in your life who wants to control what you do in your house the South African apartheid government was like that. They wanted to control affairs Sabotwana. And so they wanted to crush this marriage, Yasereza and Ruth. But they failed, shame. <laughs> Although Sereza was exiled to London for six years. And, but he fought, he fought for this relationship. He fought for his people. He fought for his rightful um, seat of of being a chief yeah <laughs> he fought for that but um, in between the challenges he and his uncle um, went to their low in their relationship there were a breakaway in the tribe now those for Tigedi and those for Sereze but eventually when they got when Sereze brought Ruth home that's when the tribe actually got to know Ruth and the person she was and they loved her and they loved Sereza but you know the government and the uncle and the South African government 
where a barrier between these people even in in london people said no they were against interracial marriages the south african government even passed the law of of refusing interracial marriages because of Serete. And should Serete enter South Africa, they would have arrested him. You know, there was a lot of hate, a lot of hate from white people to Ruth, a lot of hate from white people to both Serete and Ruth. You know, the, they were fine with Serete. Serete was a lovable person, but they didn't want him with Ruth. And so, because of those challenges, because of the negativity around them, they created a positivity to be together and fight this thing, to be in this thing together. And um, that love was unshakable. And that love was the most powerful. That love was the most beautiful. And I remember somewhere in the book where Ruth expressed how, how great Sereza was as a husband to her. She said she she never once stood like this at a door or at the at, at a window tapping her foot waiting on Sereta to come home because um, not once did Sereta disrespect her and make her feel less of a person make her feel like because they were in this situation and Sereta was having these difficulties that you know she wasn't worth it you know they they traveled this journey together and it was a beautiful journey and i love that you know they had beautiful children and one of the children became president ian kama um so that the shame died very young he was 50 something and then when he died the world now looked at ruth and and, and they thought Ruth was going to leave Botswana. <laughs> Woo! Ruth, my girl, she never, she never left Botswana because she said, let me read it for you. I am completely happy here. I traveled to Britain and Switzerland as part of my charity work for the Red Cross, but I have no desire to go anywhere else. My home is here. I have lived here for more than half my life. My children are here. When I came to this country, I became a Mutwana. Oh! <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, like, this was such a beautiful love story. And I hear the movie was beautiful, so I wanted to watch the movie, but I didn't want to watch it before I finished the book. And now that I finished the book, I'm going to watch um, the movie. This love, guys just beautiful and what I learned about it is that if a love has a strong foundation whatever comes you know won't shake it it will you know it won't it won't make it fall it won't it won't break it and we're not talking about silly stupid things you know we are talking about real life issues like what they had like the challenges they faced i don't know if i have reviewed this book enough for you to understand how beautiful it is it's got a lot of information it's got a lot of um history political backgrounds but it is it's a love story and that's what i love about it and um i will forever be grateful to to god for for choosing this book for me because i feel like you know this book chose me i didn't choose it you know there is ruth ruth and there is sarasa kama sarasa kama looks like my dad guys yeah and um there is um, Therese and Ruth and their children, Jacqueline and baby Therese Kama Ian, Ian who was the president of Botswana not long ago. Um, these are the pictures I was telling you about. You know when, when a book talks about a life of a person, I appreciate the pictures because they give you another perspective of what you were imagining.
I think I will end this video here because I didn't want it to take too long but you know me I go on and on and on and on but I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed this book and as much as I enjoyed doing this video thank you for subscribing thank you for your comments thank you for your likes and if you haven't subscribed yet I hope this video will make you do that um, thank you again for everything I will see you on my next video Kalaba if you're interested in a love story with a lot of information and history this book is for you definitely one of my favorites bye